guys, it's Chris with Microsoft here with another exciting episode of Let's Tech. Uh, this will be a little bit different in that uh, we're not just kind of stumbling across the technology and kind of working through it. I'm even considering not making this an official Let's Tech episode because what we're going to be doing here today is talking about domain controller performance and uh, how to troubleshoot it, identify it, and some tools that we can use that are built into Windows to um, uh, get... Uh, your domain controller performing a little bit better. Uh, so typically when this starts to come up, what we have is a, uh, a high performance impact to a domain controller, usually in CPU, um, that can also traverse over to disk issues like latency with disks, but uh, depending on how much memory you have there, that's a little less common. Most of the time when you have um, issues with a domain controller running slowly, you're first going to notice it in CPU. And typically when you go in and start sorting in Task Manager to try to figure out why the thing is running slow, you're going to find this LSAS.exe guy here. He is an in-memory process and is Active Directory on a domain controller. So this is the guy you're going to be looking for right here. So uh, artificially, I'll see if I can go ahead and show you a condition. I'm not sure that this is going to work out super great because by now most of the directory uh, has been up in memory and getting indexed. But let's, uh, let's import uh, module. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see the commands I'm topping. And then we're going to go active. And so I'm going to simulate what it's going to look like when you start to see badly performing domain controllers not necessarily result of you having un underpowered your your DC. It is not always a you didn't plan ahead. It's much more common in my experience over the years that when we start seeing domain controller performance issues, it's it's a lot of times somebody else doing something horrible or unholy to your your directory. And that's not uncommon because not a lot of your programmers out there know how to write uh, good LDAP queries or get information properly out of the directory. So uh, a good example would be um, get uh, AD object and then let's do a uh, filter everything and then let's do a um, uh, properties everything and just go ahead and fire that off. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask the domain controller essentially to give us an entire copy of the directory here. So we should start to see a spike in CPU performance here. Now this uh, VM is probably a little underpowered but not enough for it to have really spiked it a whole lot. Um, but you can see how this type of a query, which by the way is still running, um, isn't exactly the most healthy or uh, <laughs> useful actually think I may have hit the other DC so let's do one other thing here let's go ahead and see if we can get this canceled I'm probably pummeling a different DC than the one I'm seeing so I'm gonna do a uh, uh, server 9z DC2 just to make sure we hit the actual DC that uh, we're, we're uh, wanting to monitor here so now for sure I know I'm gonna go hit this guy we should once again see kind of a performance spike right there and if we were watching in details we'd see lsas.exe was the one that went to 100. So this isn't the best uh, example of what you'd see on the DC's end but if you were to imagine a whole lot of servers making this same terrible uh, query against your directory um, you you could see where quickly this starts to stack up. All right, So we saw a little pause there maybe we saw a bit of a spike in performance yeah so it was waiting on some execution cycles to go. So what would cause this? Where, where in the world would you see this actually out in the real world? A, a, a query this badly written? Well, it's actually very common. I see these all the time. Uh, I'll give one example. Somebody who is writing some little web page that's going to be internal to your organization and that organization um, has hired a web developer maybe that's going to every time you load a page they're going to have like some drop down box where they can pick people that are listed in AD. Uh, but that programmer doesn't know how to do a properly formatted LDAP query. And so, as a result, um, they just go ahead and say, well, select all from everything. Sort of like a SQL query. Uh, 
know, there's not a lot of difference between the way SQL queries work and AD LDAP queries work. Um, what they would do in the case that we're seeing here is go build themselves an array, um, suck in the entire directory into a variable, and then just filter out on the other server side, the web server side, what data they want and display only what they need. So what they may only have needed were, in this case, users, and they may have only needed them possibly even from a specific organizational unit, um, and they may have also only wanted them uh, to be matching a certain condition, like, um, you know, starts with a, a certain name, and then even probably more relevant, um, we would see them wanting to only get certain properties of the user because let's go ahead and break this for a second and uh, take a look at where we're getting you can see for every user I'm getting things like you know account expires and their country code and the date created and stuff if I just want to get a drop down of uh, users I probably only want some uh, fairly rudimentary attributes to uh, to appear here right so I might just want the name but we've selected everything we've selected even computer objects so you uh, if we were to scroll through here long enough we'd actually be seeing computer and user objects and everything kind of uh, set together so I'm gonna go ahead and control C and get this thing to stop doing what it's doing there and uh, you should see performance kind of level off there so that's the end of that LDAP query so the first thing we want to do is uh, identify that yes it is Active Directory that is the the piece that is making your DC go slow and so when you are looking for that you're looking for things like in task manager uh, you can sort by memory utilization but you can see he's kind of up on the top and CPU utilization even more importantly when you see that that's the one getting slammed that just means Active Directory is responding very quickly well that's that's great you you've identified that that's the problem so where do we go from there so there's uh, there's a couple of different places that we can go get some additional information one of them being perfmon but as opposed to just loading up a bunch of random counters that maybe we do or do not understand active directory has its own uh, system counter that we can use and this is actually a very powerful tool and I'll, I'll show you some of the counters really quickly that we could use um, there's actually uh, two different places you can find those so one of those is in database and you go find your instance so when we go and say let's say cache percent hit this is an important uh, counter to use that means how many times are we actually getting information and presenting it back to whoever's asking for it from RAM uh, versus going out and having to read information off the disk right so that's that's an important one you can see that we've got um, LSAS right here. We've also got our uh, NTFRS and some other stuff, but LSAS is the one that we would do. And that's just a, you know, one of many counters that we could get in the database uh, container. But we've also got other counters that we can get by uh, going actually into Active Directory and looking at its counters here. So you'll see that Directory Services, if I can get it to quit wiggling around there, has just tons of stuff and as we've talked about before in uh, how to use perfmon and we'll be talking quite a bit later uh, when I get into my performance series if you don't know what any of these are you know that's uh, and admitting uh, ambiguous name resolutions per second um, can't even pronounce the word if you don't know what something is you can click show description right so that's, that gives us a little bit of a hint, so maybe we're not looking for the address book and uh, ambiguous name searches. We're looking more for, you know, the, you know, let's get down to something interesting like LDAP searches per second, right? So if we're looking for LDAP searches per second and LDAP bind time and uh, things of that nature, we can uh, come down here and we can figure out that that's really what we're looking for from the description. Now, you can only do this live can't use a captured performance monitor counter and then come back and look at this later but um, as long as you're looking on the DC at the uh, live perfmon this is this is a good place to uh, get some descriptions of what these are and which ones are useful so we could dump that in there for NTDS and we can we can go and actually search for those but there are uh, a ton of these counters in here right? 
So what I like to do instead is actually go into data collector sets and then here under system you're going to find one of them called Active Directory Diagnostics. As you can see, this contains NT kernel traces, an Active Directory trace, and then perf uh, counters themselves, and then some stuff in the AD registry. And all we have to do is just right click and say start. So right now, we've got an Active Directory system performance count uh, uh, counter set going. And you can go find these under the reports section and go under AD Diagnostics. You can see that it's appended with the date. So you can see that it is collecting data for 30, uh, 300 seconds. So it's going to run a five minute report. So as long as the problem that you're having occurs during that time, which we're going to artificially go ahead and do that, um, <clears throat> as long as the issue that you are uh, dealing with is happening during the five minutes uh, that, that uh, you know, this report's going to run, you're going to get some fairly detailed information about what kind of queries are running against your directory, uh, what uh, you know? What uh, time they happened? What did the LDAP query look like? Uh, what was the impact to them? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, I'm going to go ahead and let that run for five minutes, and I'm going to let this uh, really unholy, terrible uh, query run for a few minutes, and then we're going to come back and we're going to look at what kind of a report gets generated. So once it finishes with the five minute capture, you can see it goes to a generating report at that point. I actually you can see that the number on this report changed. I had to restart that and put an upper boundary on our, let me switch back over to our client here. I had to actually change the uh, query somewhat because uh, I put a resultant size as you can see of uh, 3000 in here because as it was, you know, the, the thing actually took longer than the five minutes for that to even run. So, okay, here we go. So now the report has finished running, and we're back on the domain controller here, and we can uh, see that this is broken up into some basic performance data, such as it will show me what the CPU utilization was uh, during this time, network. It also is showing me that we had uh, pretty hefty usage of uh, RAM on, on this server. Active Directory is an in-memory process, and it will use uh, memory mapped files, which is basically means if the database is one big flat file, which it is, the directory information tree or DIT file that you'll see, that is uh, what Active Directory does and what it is, is, uh, oops, not program files, how about Windows, and you can see the database file our case is, there we go, about 100 megs, so not, not just ginormous by any means, but uh, as you do searches, as you do things, as things happen, people authenticate, group policy processes, people get uh, checked to see if they're members of groups and whatnot, the Active Directory database will get read from disk, and as it gets read from disk, it becomes part of memory, and as it goes into memory, as long as there is memory available, the virtual memory manager will leave it there because it knows that it's more efficient. Until the system starts to starve for RAM, it won't start pulling things back out uh, of this uh, uh, RAM. So anyway, that's, that's great. We've got this neat little section here, but this is where this report gets really powerful. As you can see, we've got a um, search section under Active Directory directory services, we've got LDAP, so you can see kind of what searches are being performed against the directory uh, during this particular uh, point in time, and what types of uh, searches we're running, and LDAP has its own section as well, and we can see some fairly interesting things when we come down here and uh, look, with, uh, look at things like clients with the most CPU usage, right, and we can see, you know, which machines out there which I have to imagine that's probably nine right there, so we can find that out. Nope, that's 15, so we'd be looking for 15 in here. It's also possible that my search didn't make it into this report if, um, if I didn't get it stopped in time or if it ran over, so we may or may not see this. I may have to pause and, and rerun this condition again, but you can see um, what kinds of searches we're getting. We're, we can see the um, impact that those searches had, and which clients it is that is beating up your uh, machine the most. Uh, 
uh, out of all of the different things that are going on inside of the, the directory. What kind of searches you're going to get are going to be listed here, including the actual searches. So you can see the LDAP search right here would have been from um, somebody looking at the domain system volume. We've got just a base search right here at 9z local looking for some group, right? So it doesn't look like the one that came from our uh, test machine there uh, actually made it into this report. They either didn't make it heavy and bulky enough for it to get in here, or it could be that uh, that uh, that search didn't make it into the report because it uh, it died. So let's, uh, let's tweak that search just one more time. I will pause the video and we'll see what we can get. Let's try to do just something a little uh, easier like a resultant set size of 500. Quite certain that during that period of time we should be able to get through at least 500 results so that we can kind of see what's impacting. I'm going to go ahead and drop this out and we'll kick off another AD Diag report. Validate that it is in fact capturing data. Come back over here and let's kick this off. Now we should only be getting about 500 uh, users returned, which surely should be able to complete within the five minutes. And once that occurs, uh, I'll unpause the video and we'll uh, find that in the uh, Diag report and we'll go over what that, uh, what that looks like to you once you find the culprit who's actually causing the problem. Incidentally, you can actually export this if you need it to run longer than five minutes, although I would be very cautious about this because your um, your Active Directory Diagnostics does include interchange of kernel traces and AD traces, and these can get incredibly, these ETL files, this event tracing for Windows files can get incredibly big, incredibly fast. So I would caution about doing this. But you can actually save this as a template. So we could save it on here on the desktop and call AD Diag template. And then we can actually do uh, a new data collector set under user defined and we could do that as AD longer or something like that and then create from a template next and then we could actually oh we didn't even have to export it I forgot that in 2012 you have the AD diagnostics on a DEC it's already there so we can just say build me another one looks just like AD diagnostics uh, you might want to consider putting this somewhere else uh, other than C I only have a C drive here so let's just uh, you know, stick it out here on the desktop we'll call it temp AD diag throw it in there, that's where these things are going to go, and create the data collector set, go ahead and save it and close it now. So then we can get in here and start editing properties on it, such as, you know, um, you know, stop condition right now is at five minutes, so if you are having a problem that seems to be taking longer than what you can caption the report, you might turn that up to maybe 15 minutes or so. Um, and then when you kick those off, I'm not going to run the two at the same time for performance reasons, but um, if you kick the two of them, uh, this one off, uh, you can actually have the same report come to you in a little bit uh, uh, more customized fashion. But as you, as you can see when we look at it, it does still include the NT kernel trace and the AD trace and then your perf counters and registers. It's identical to the uh, AD diagnostics report, only we can modify the amount of time. That's kind of new. That's not something we were able to do in the past. So that's kind of a nice uh, little addition to this. So anyway, um, we have finished our search query here. So we did manage this time to get 500 uh, results back through the system before it goes and kicks us and times it out. So I'll pause the video as this uh, goes and builds our report for us, and then uh, we'll take another look at it here in a minute. All right, there we go. Okay, so we now have... Uh, completed report and we've got uh, this broken up as I described before so we won't need to go into that so we'll go ahead and bust open the uh, Active Directory section and we'll look at the searches. Now we can start with LDAP if we know that it's an LDAP query that the person is actually firing against you here and we can start with things like um, clients with the most CPU usage and you can find the server that is actually beating up your DC pretty quickly. So obviously that's a port number. That's going to be different every time because we do have the ephemeral port range in use here. So that could have been anywhere from 49,000 to 64,000. Don't need to get into a whole lot of that. Um, but 
So we know for sure that this is the IP address that we were using on that client. You can see that the result was so bad that it actually exceeded the top size that we could pull through, and that took 2,234 milliseconds. So that's a pretty long search for just a simple LDAP query. But more importantly is finding out what is the person looking for. So I'll show you some of the searches that go in here, and we'll uh, look at, as you can see, the very top one uh, is, is listed here, so that's going to be the, the one that had the uh, most impact and most uh, returned uh, category. So I'm going to scroll this to the right. It shows you what index it used. It shows you that it touched 9,826 objects and returned me 1,000. Now, 1,000 is the, the limit that I have, uh, and that's the default limit for number of items that I'll be returned without sending back a page request. This is the important part here, the filter name, which this search was so bad that it doesn't even have a filter. It's just true. In other words, the object exists is the filter. Don't send me anything that doesn't exist. If it exists, send it to me. In other words, give me an entire copy of the Active Directory database. This is a, a terrible, terrible query. Here are some better looking queries. So, well, I haven't looked at these, so let's just see what we've got. We can see that something was um, looking for something in the schema, right? It should just give me auto, uh, object category equals, you know, a DNS zone here in the schema. Um, so here's a good looking LDAP query. So the LDAP queries kind of look like these, right? So they're all in parentheses. If you've got multiple things joined together, we'll, we'll run through a few of these here in a minute. We just put an ampersand and then you put each thing that you're going to query on inside of a, um, uh, you know, a, a parentheses. So we're going to say, okay, if it's uh, object category, DHCP config, and you can see it's either one of these, this little pipe um, means it can be any one of these things. So if it is either once again, we're in parentheses with more parentheses saying kind of an or statement. DHCP servers is that or that or that or that. Return it to me. And you can see the results of that query, um, whatever it was uh, that created this query. We can go over here and actually see what it was. Um, that was uh, server at 10.0.0.9. Those results, it actually only had to look through five things in the directory in order to get me one thing that matched and it only took 0% CPU utilization and 6 milliseconds to return. So that's a properly constructed LDAP query. All right, so we'll cover uh, how to do better LDAP queries here in a little bit, but you can take some of these uh, queries that you see in here and, and uh, use a little tool that's built into Windows and uh, go and use that to test what your users are actually going to get back when they uh, when they run those queries and you can see hey is this a bad query or is this a good query because right off bat if you're not familiar with LDAP you may or may not know what a good query looks like right off you'll start to get that pretty quickly and uh, that's kind of the next section what we're going to start talking about here all right so let's jump back over to our client computer we're going to run a little tool that some of you may or may not have used before. It's called LDP. So just LDP. You can just type that into run or you can type it into a command line and it's a fairly simplistic looking tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to a DC and in this case I'm going to this 9Z DC2. You could connect to uh, nothing if you're sitting on a DC and it'll just connect to itself. We're going to be just using port 389, just an LDAP port. Uh, if you were wanting to look at the global catalog, you would use the global uh, uh, catalog port uh, 3268. If you're going to test any of your uh, SSL type connections, then obviously you would use the SSL ports for those. And uh, we're just going to click OK here. And as you can see, we're going to bind. Well, not bind, we're just going to connect with an LDAP port to 9ZDC2 uh, on 3289 and we're going to get a little information about the directory. This is publicly posted information about the directory. The directory is kind of available uh, to any of the consumers of it so it's not surprising that it shows a bunch of stuff. That does freak people out but try to remember this is a directory just like a phone book. You, uh, 
need to describe kind of what's in the phone book, right? So that's kind of what we're seeing here. I'm not going to go into all this. Uh, probably at a later date, we'll do a little more advanced AD, uh, what you can get out of um, information that's at the uh, root DSE. Uh, this is basically just telling you about itself, uh, what you've connected to and what you can do that. So we're going to go ahead and bind, right? So I'm going to bind as my currently logged on user. So I'm authenticated to the domain controller. You can see that that, uh, that did in fact work. And so uh, now we are bound to 9ZDC2 and we can do some interesting things uh, with, with these uh, uh, searches. So we're going to go ahead before we start a search and make some changes. So let's uh, actually, let me just show you what a, a standard kind of a, a search might look like. So we've got where we're going to search from. In this case, um, DC equals nine Z uh, local. So I'm looking at the root of the directory, at least in the uh, domain partition. And what are we going to look for? Let's do something kind of simple. So we'll say, and, um, and this is kind of the construction of the query, right? That means I'm going to do two things here. So object class equals user. How about an equal sign? And then let's say, uh, Sam account name equals Chris. I think that that's how I have myself. And let's just say that I want the name only attribute. And uh, how about just just for fun, let's get uh, the uh, uh, CN too. So if I run this query, we've got zero entries. So let's try just name. looking for so let me show you how I would get some of uh, these things here so let's go into the directory go look for me and then I'll find a attribute we can search for um, so I think I'm in the no GPO right now so let's go into Chris and let's look at some of the attributes let's find something easy to search on here filter down to only stuff that has values. So there's a C in this Chris. Let's find something real simple. Display name. We don't want to search for that. Um, could search on mail. That would be pretty easy. So name is Chris Davis. And same account name is Chris. Right? So uh, somehow or another my LDAP query did not work. The Sam account name So these are the three options you have for where you're going to look for it. Do you want to look at it at just base 9z.local, um, that one level, or do you want to go down to any uh, subsequent results underneath it? So now we should get a uh, result. So uh, giving zero entry. So something's still a mess here. Object class equals user, Sam account name equals Chris. Uh, we noticed that. Davis. Oh, <laughs> right. you get so used to. Uh, process of trying to learn not to uh, go to the GUI first and use PowerShell for like everything. In PowerShell, when you do a query, you do quotes. When you do a LDAP query, you do not need actual quotes. So take the quotes out, run it again. We should, aha, there we go. So you can see that what we returned, we got one entry. It gave me the uh, distinguished name by default, so I never have to ask for that, but it only gave me name because that's what I asked for. If I wanted instead to get everything, I could run this query again and I get all my attributes. So this is a very simple looking uh, LDAP query. You can even make it simpler by not even have the object class as user. That's a good habit to be in though. Make sure and ask the, what type of thing it is that you're looking for because uh, that makes it for a little bit better query. Um, so 
Anyway, this is a pretty easy little LDAP tool where you can go in and learn how to run uh, you know, queries. And um, the syntax is pretty much if you're going to combine a few things together, as I mentioned before, you put an ampersand there. And then you can put you know, name equals a certain thing. Um, and then maybe mail equals uh, Chris at 9z.com. And we should still get. So th there are extra um, options we could see. We saw the one query here over switching back to the DC where we um, had a ampersand and some or statements mixed in. So if I wanted to do this same search, I can just copy it and paste it right out of that report. So you can see we're doing... A search from 9z DC local. We can see the object category and all of these, and see what we would get back when we uh, run that that same query. And it's uh, it's not going to show up in the domain partition because this is in schema. So we need to go and actually switch where we're going to search from. And there we go from the config partition rather. Okay, so you can see that this is what that consumer got back when they made this query. So, okay, that's all fine and great, Chris, right? You've shown me how to do some you know, queries. Um, we could probably do a couple of you know, interesting things with that, like you know, the, the one we here have here, we can break that down to... like this right so as I already mentioned that means I'm going to do a few things and that means I have an or statement and then um, if I wanted to say that I don't want something in there I could exclude myself from results. So by putting the pound around that, that means don't look for this. Just keep things in parentheses and LDAP queries become really, really super uh, easy to do. I've actually come to think of that. That doesn't even need to be there. Uh, the easier way to have written that query would be just not name equals Chris Davis. So you, you can do them with parentheses in, in more complex situations. You can also do uh, wildcards. So if we were looking for Chris, but we don't really know what else might be there, we would have a wildcard there, and it, it'll uh, uh, use that just as you would expect it to with a, uh, you know, a, a, a anything that starts with you know, Chris, or you could put that on the other side and uh, have anything that ends with Chris or Davis in that case. Right? So those are uh, those are some. Uh, good place you can do this. Now, where can you use these LDAP queries? Well, you can actually use them in custom searches in Active Directory. And if you look at the Advanced tab in AD, you'll always see a, uh, a little LDAP query. So once you get good at doing uh, LDAP queries, that's one place you can use them. And another place you can use them is in uh, PowerShell. So if you're like me and trying to get used to always running things in PowerShell is kind of a, a starting point, the command is really pretty simple. You do get ad object, and then one of the options you have is uh, uh, LDAP filter, and then you just encapsulate that in a couple of single quotes, paste your um, query that we were just looking at in there, and uh, run it. Now, obviously, we modified it, so that's why we didn't get any results back, but uh, LDAP fi filter could be something as simple as get ad object ldap filter and then we could do similar to what we were just looking at a minute ago um, name equals chris davis d-a-v-i-s end friend and run and there we go um, you can get 
get more advanced with these. Uh, because it's PowerShell, you can do quite a few other things, like uh, the um, uh, yeah, in, include deleted objects is very important. We'll get to that later. Properties, uh, result page size, right? So if I had a similar query that was going to return a whole lot of um, uh, folks before, let's just say we're going to do name equals C dollar sign and result page size. Let's give me more than no more than ten. Uh, oops, that's result set size. Let's try running that again, but this time not page size. I'm going to do the result set size. It equals ten, and you can see I get uh, ten people back when I run run it like this. This is still a pretty badly written uh, LDAP query, and so that's how we're going to cover in this next section what uh, what we can do to make these things not uh, look bad. So let's say that we've run this, you've run it against the system, you probably sat there and counted up the seconds on a terrible, terrible query and you know kind of figured out in your head how long it took you for that to run, but there's a lot better way. So where we're going to go here is up into options and then under search. Under search we've got several different things we can do. The first thing we're going to do is going to click extended. And then the second thing we're going to do is go into controls. We're going to find this little control called search stats. And we're going to add that in. So now we have a control called search stats. And we can even get a little more fancy and turn off display results. You might be thinking it's a little counterintuitive. Why would I search with something and tell it not to show me? Well, this is why. So we have these queries we were running before. So let's go ahead and kick off another uh, badly written query. And let's uh, let's start at the base and do a full subtree search and let's do um, well let's kind of use the one we used a moment ago in PowerShell so name equals C pound Oop, I'm doing it again aren't I no more quotes bad Chris bad Chris I don't know what the hell that is um, and then attributes star so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this query and it's going to sit there and think about it for a while. And then it's going to bring me, instead of the results back, I'm going to get this data here. Now this is where things can get really powerful in the LDP tool. I don't know of another tool that can do this. First off, it's going to tell me that it took uh, 1.8 seconds to run that query. It's going to say that it actually had to touch um, 1,032 objects to come back with 759. That's not so bad, uh, actually, but there there are certainly better uh, ways we could construct this query in different places we could go. Um, we can see things like what was the filter we used and what index did it actually touch. You can see it used the name index, right? Well, that's not too surprising, right? Because our search was on name, so it would make sense that the database would go to an index called name. What is important about that is for you to know that there is an index on the name attribute. Some Active Directory attributes are indexed and other Active Directory attributes are not indexed. So if we have an indexed attribute we're going to get better results back from AD than we would if we were looking at something that was not. Alright so continuing on, how many pages do we need to reference? It took us 21,000 pages. How many were read from a disk? 231. What does that mean? That means that 231 records had to be pulled up off the hard drive um, in order for it to go. Now, where this gets even more interesting is, if I run this exact same query again, that number will change. So let's run it again and go see what our results are. This time we see pages read from disk zero. Now, why would that be? Well, that would be because those portions of the index and the Active Directory database are now in memory. There's no reason to go back to the disk to go get something that was already uh, copied up under RAM. And that'll stay there until this server starts to run out of uh, memory. So you can see Active Directory has a tendency to get more efficient uh, the longer it runs. What effect did that have? Well, the first time it ran, it had 1.8 uh, seconds, and this time it's 1.3 seconds. So you can see it, cut, it shaved a half a second off of the query when it ran it the second time because it already had the pages out of the index that it needed uh, for it to pull up and give me the results I was looking for. So spotting really terrible, god-awful queries would be just object class equals anything. So if we run this one, that's all attributes 
for everything in the directory, right? And we can see this thing timed out, right? It, it, it couldn't even get us all of the things we were looking for. So we had to go to 9,000 things in the database just to get 1,000 back before we died. It had no real usable filter, and it didn't go to a very good index. It's just the, the typical DNT index, which is like everything in the database, right? So if you've got a uh, badly written query, this is where you're going to start seeing you're going to see uh, you know people running up into a wall. A lot of times your web developer may even call you before you even know there's a uh, problem with some silly request like, hey, can we turn the LDAP default uh, search results up? I need to be able to pull, you've got 9,000 people in the directory, I need to be able to pull them all at once uh, in one single query without it having to pave. So can we get it so that when I ask for something from the directory, give it all back? That should be a red alarm. You should not honor that request. Um, even if it comes from a legitimate third party who says that it is absolutely necessary, that is not true. You should not be modifying the LDAP property so that you can return horribly written queries for third party developers or internal developers who don't know what they're doing. Um, you need to educate them on how to either handle paging in their application, which just means give me 500 things at a time, and then I'll ask for the next 500. Uh, or they need to be a little more specific about what they're going after. For instance, what I just asked for was not just users. This would give me computers, this would give me groups, this would give me uh, just about everything that is stored in the domain partition in Active Directory. And there's a lot of stuff in there. If you watched my previous video, the reason that we were setting up for that video was to, uh, you know, the, what we were setting up was to get a whole bunch of names in here. Uh, so let's go back to this one again. Let's say A star. Everybody whose name starts with A. So what we'll get back is, uh, you know, the name attribute. And once again, we're looking at kind of some, some decent results there. So this next section is going to be on how to help your people to optimize their queries um, and indexing, and specifically how we can improve the index. And uh, even if we can't improve their search, it is potential at times that we may end up uh, having to change the configuration of the Active Directory database to better support the applications that are using it by maybe changing the type of an index that we use or even adding additional indexes in. So that'll be the next part and uh, I'm going to take a break here and I believe we'll probably go ahead and cut the video into two sections. So anyway guys, this has been uh, Chris with Microsoft, and as always, thanks for watching. If you found anything about this uh, useful or interesting, please give me a quick like, I'd sure appreciate it. Also feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, another thing, my blog is at 9z.com, that's uh, real easy to remember, it's just the last number followed by the last letter, dot com. Uh, that's got also links to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter. So anyway, uh, we'll continue with part two of this uh, Active Directory performance in the next episodes, and I thank you a ton for listening. See you in the next episode.